welcome to the last part of the unit chiral drugs so let us consider the dextropropoxyphene this is an analgesic drug analgesic means it is painkiller and this is the structure of the compound here BN here phenyl group is there that is attached with one chiral center that chiral center contains benzyl group BN is a benzyl group PHCH2 group the chiral center is also attached with the OCOET ester group next carbon also it is chiral then CH2 NME2 now let us first uh, see the synthesis of this compound how to synthesize this molecule the synthesis starts with the benzene so this benzene is subjected to Fiddlecraft acylation This is propanoid chloride CH3, CH2, CO, Cl in presence of anhydrous aluminium chloride. This acyl group is incorporated into the benzene ring. Now, in, when it is treated with the base. N N dimethylamine in presence of formaldehyde. So the base abstracts the hydrogen from the alpha carbon. It's a resonance stabilized carbanion means it goes to the enolate. Now this enolate undergoes the reaction with the formaldehyde and the CH to OH group comes into the alpha position then OH undergoes the further nucleophilic substitution that hydroxy methyl group gets converted into the CH to NME2 now when that compound is allowed to react with Grignard reagent benzyl magnesium bromide then that nucleophilic addition happens to the C double bond O the benzyl group which is abbreviated as BN it gets added to the C double bond O so C double bond O after Grignard addition gets converted into the tertiary alcohol so but this compound is racemic mixture because we are not uh, applying any strategy of asymmetric synthesis so therefore in order to proceed to the further steps which will give the dextropropoxyphene this racemic mixture of this compound was can be subjected to resolution so this is uh, uh, because of the presence of this NME2 it can be subjected to resolution by using optically pure chiral acid 
Now when the plus and the minus get separated and then this OH gets converted into the ester. So when it undergoes the reaction with the propionic anhydride. So the final compound what we get is the dextropropoxyphene means this final compound is dextrorotatory. So dextropropoxyphene synthesis is over with this. You see this preparation of this molecule starts from the benzene. Now let us consider the mode of action of this molecule dextropropoxyphene how it is acting as analgesic. Analgesic means in a simple word it is a painkiller. It reduces the pain. So as because it reduces the pain uh, it interacts with the central nervous system. So when it interacts with the receptors present in the central nervous system then GTP guanidine triphosphate can't replace guanidine diphosphate. GTP can't replace GDP. So it affects the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP. Adenosine ATP means adenosine triphosphate. CMP stands for the cyclic adenosine monophosphate. So in the cell cyclic adenosine monophosphate concentration decreases. So the, as a result of this it inhibits the release of many neurotransmitters because of the decrease in the concentration of cyclic adenosine monophosphate CMP. So what exactly it does? It interacts with the receptors present in the central nervous system. As a result of this GTP can't replace GDP and that is indirectly associated with the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP concentration falls inside the cell so which blocks the release of many neurotransmitters. And in addition, it blocks calcium channel and opens calcium dependent potassium channel. And this results in the hyperpolarization and reduces the pain. Hyperpolarization, repolarization, depolarization, these are the terms related to the nerve cells. So it reduces the pain. So now let us see the pictorial representation of the mode of action of dextropropoxyphene, how it reduces the pain and acts as analgesic. You see this is one nerve, let us consider this is the nerve. <coughs> And this is that another nerve. In between these two nerves, when the message goes in this gap, which is called as the synaptic cleft. 
so this one is called as the post synaptic neuron neuron is the building block of nerve nervous system means it is a it is nerve cell which is called as neuron and this is the presynaptic neuron so in presynaptic neuron and the post synaptic neuron in between the gap is called as the synaptic cleft now these are all the receptors present in the central these are all these nerve cells are present in the central nervous systems and these are the receptors present in the cell membrane of nerve cells now these uh, dextropropoxyphene interacts with the receptors present in the cell membrane of central nervous system and it decreases the pain so now let us see in another way if you zoom in into this interaction it is like this so this is the cell membrane of nerve cell the nerve cell belongs to the central nervous system this r stands for the receptor and this d is the drug molecule here it is dextropropoxyphene now if this dextropropoxyphene is present in the binding site of opioid receptor then opioid um, cannot come and interact with this opioid receptor so as a result of this the patient feels decrease in the pain so dextropropoxyphene in this way by interacting with the receptor of neurons of central nervous system it blocks the opioid receptor and helps in reducing pain now with that we have completed the ninth chiral drug now we will go to the we will go to the ephedrine now ephedrine is also chiral drug and the dextro rotatory ephedrine is there in the syllabus so we have to discuss that now the dextro rotatory ephedrine ephedrine has actually the two chiral centers and this dextro rotatory ephedrine has the absolute configuration at the first carbon r and the second carbon s so let us see how how this center is um, this is oh bearing center so how it is how it is r now let us first put the priority that oxygen is the first priority this down key carbon is attached with the nitrogen so this is the second priority phenyl is the third priority so hydrogen is the fourth priority 1 2 2 2 3 it is anti clockwise fourth priority group is on the horizontal line so they are four the absolute configuration of this chiral center is r now coming down that is the second um, carbon um, at this particular carbon the absolute configuration is s so if we see this is the first priority this is the second priority 
methyl is a third priority and the hydrogen is a fourth priority so one two 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 three this is clockwise but the fourth priority group is on the horizontal line so therefore the absolute configuration of the center is s so the plus ephedrine has the absolute configuration 1r2s so this is what it is called the one r two s this one r two s is actually the divo um, rotatory ephedrine whereas the plus ephedrine has this absolute configuration this is its mirror image in a enantiomer that is one s two r so one s two r only will be having as having the medicinal importance so let us see so how to synthesize this chiral drug now the synthesis of ephedrine starts from the benzaldehyde so benzaldehyde undergoes benzaldehyde undergoes the condensation with pyruvic acid in presence of pyruvate decarboxylase and decarbox decarboxylase means it helps in it catalyzes decarboxylation so as a result of this this will be having that is ph chooh this is c double bond o and ch3 so this is alpha hydroxy carbonyl compound now when this will undergo the reaction with the In primary amine water elimination happens this gets converted into imine now this imine when it is subjected to the catalytic hydrogenation by uh, hydrogen and in presence of platinum then what happens reductive amination happens means this carbon becomes sp3 hybridized and that nhch3 group comes at that particular carbon and make the carbon chiral now this molecule has two chiral centers one is the benzylic position of h is there another is on the next carbon that is nhch3 is there now when it is subject so this is this compound has the functional group basic functional group so this molecule can be separated by using the optically pure acid now after resolution l ephedrine and the d ephedrine can be separated now d ephedrine d ephedrine has absolute configuration 1s 2r this is 1s 2r the l ephedrine has the absolute configuration 1r 2s with this we have finished completed the synthesis of plus ephedrine now let us see how does it work means what is its mode of action so it is a bronchodilator so this is it stimulates both the alpha and the beta receptors means alpha <laughs> alpha and the beta are the two different types of <coughs> excuse me alpha and the beta adrenergic receptors so this ephedrine stimulates means extra rotatory ephedrine stimulates both alpha and the beta receptors it increases bp by vasoconstriction and the cardiac stimulation it also causes the bronchodilation so bronchodilation means bronchodilation means that is the the 
that vessel through which air comes into the lungs that pipe will be affected by the ephedrine now let us see the pictorial representation of this this is one nerve this is another nerve this is the presynaptic nerve this is the presynaptic nerve and this is the post synaptic nerve this is the post synaptic nerve in between the presynaptic nerve and the post synaptic nerve the signal goes by taking the help of the neurotransmitters so this dark colored circled are ephedrines and the without dark color only circles are nor ephedrine so these are all the alpha and the beta adrenergic receptors so these are all coming and the when it is it is coming into the synaptic cleft then already ephedrine is there in the binding site of alpha and the beta receptors so therefore what happens this nor ephedrine cannot interact with the binding site of alpha and the beta adrenergic receptors so now ephedrine can directly bind to the adrenergic receptors and increase the concentration of the norepinephrine in the synaptic cap so they cannot be metabolized by comt catechol o methyl transferase comt ki full form is catechol o methyl transferase now indirectly ephedrine enters into the presynaptic nerve terminal by reuptake process so they displace norepinephrine from storage vesicles and increases its concentration in synaptic cleft so as a result of these two things happens one is the increase in the bp and another one is the vasodilation so if we go to the again pictorial representation of this then so this is the presynaptic nerve this is the post synaptic nerve now this post synaptic nerve contains receptors the receptors have the binding sites and this gap between the presynaptic nerve and the post synaptic nerve is called as the synaptic cleft now in this synaptic cleft because of this uh, mechanism the concentration of norepinephrine gets increases now how the norepinephrine concentration is becoming more and more in the synaptic cleft and how ephedrine is helping now ephedrine is helping in two ways number 1 it interacts with the it interacts with the binding site of alpha and the beta adrenergic receptor so in the synaptic cleft that norepinephrine uh, cannot get chance to interact with the post synaptic nerve so it will remain in the synaptic cleft number 2 that this is by the reuptake process this epidrine again comes back to the presynaptic nerve and when it goes this is called as the vesicle so in the vesicle it's a storage system 
so in this storage system what is there is a norepinephrine now when the ephedrine comes then norepinephrine gets released in the synaptic cleft so number one by blocking the binding sites and by releasing the norepinephrine from the vesicle ephedrine helps to increase the concentration of norepinephrine in the synaptic cleft and this is directly associated with the two things one is the vasoconstriction cardiac stimulation and bronchodilation so with this we have finished the 10th molecule now we will go to the 11th molecule that is the griseofalvin now griseofalvin is an example of the chiral spiro compound Okay, so let us see this is the same structure here also it is written so this has the chiral center this is the chiral center this is also the chiral center and this center is a uh, this carbon is shared by the two rings so this is an example of the spiral compound so let us see that this is antifungal means if inside our body if fung we get infection due to fungus now now it is we are um, very much familiar with the different varieties of microorganisms which are responsible for varieties of um, infections inside our body like that infection may be due to the virus it may be due to the fungus it may be due to the nematodes it may be due to the um, Uh, virus. So, depending on the situation, doctor gives the medicines. So, it is antifungal, griseofalvin. So, let it's a pyrrole compound. So, let us see how to synthesize this molecule. This molecule synthesis starts with one substituted acetylene. Now. the substituted acetylene undergoes a reaction with the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde when it is treated with the butyl lithium butyl lithium is a base it abstracts the acidic hydrogen now this acidic hydrogen is this hydrogen of terminal alkyne so if hydrogen is abstracted by the base we get the again acetylide carbon nucleophile now this carbon nucleophile attacks this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound okay so first it undergoes the michael addition and then there is a further oxidation by mno2 so this mno2 the role of mno2 is the oxidation so this is So in this way, no, this uh, carbon nucleophile directly attacks with the C double bond O of aldehyde. So when this carbon nucleophile attacks this aldehyde, then aldehyde undergoes the nucleophilic. nucleophilic addition and it becomes a secondary alcohol this secondary alcohol gets oxidized to ketone by mno2 now this is labeled as a let us consider that another molecule that is a substituted aromatic compound and these substitutions are all taken into this molecule by considering the structure of visiofalvin which we are trying to synthesize 
Now if you look at the aromatic ring present in Rhizophalvin, then we can make out that there are two methoxy groups are there at the meta position with respect to each other and the one methoxy group has the chlorine atom at the ortho position. And again at the ortho position of this chlorine atom there is one oxygen. Now this compound like this aromatic compound was taken for the synthesis of Diziofalvin benzene ring where the two methoxy groups are at the meta position. Now there is one chlorine atom ortho position to the one methoxy and phenolic OH group is also present at the ortho position of chlorine atom. Now this compound is subjected to the fiddle craft acylation. So this compound is the alpha chloroacetyl chloride. This molecule contains two chlorine but the one is the acid chloride another one is the alkyl chloride so that acid chloride is more reactive so therefore it undergoes the acylation. Now this acyl group is incorporated at the ortho position of both hydroxy group and the methoxy group. Now it is treated with the sodium acetate and followed Fiddlecraft acylation happens and followed by O alkylation. So this so when we are getting the product there are this reagent contains two chlorines. So first this reacts second this reacts. So we get one what is five membered ring. So the first C double bond O gets involved in the fiddle craft acylation and this CH2Cl in the later stage it gets involved in the O alkylation. So as a result of this we get this 5 membered compound which has the two functional groups. One is the C double bond O and another one is the ether. Now this molecule undergoes the reaction with A which already we have synthesized from terminal alkyne. Now when it is treated with the base the double Michael reaction happens means with respect to this C double bond O this double bond is alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound again with respect to C double bond O this triple bond is also in conjugation so double Michael reaction there is a scope of double Michael reaction means two one after another Michael reaction happens where the nucleophile is this this center. So with the potassium tertiary butoxide the anion gets generated here and this undergoes a 1,4 addition two times as a result of this at this particular carbon uh, we get one spiral linkage. So that molecule is this molecule. So with this we have prepared the, the spiral compound. So this is that carbon which is the, this part we can make out actually that this is this part is the triple bond. Now it has become the double bond. OCH3 is the pilot. OCH3 is attached with what is called the acetylenic carbon. So after Michael addition that has become double bond and this, so definitely the other side of this cyclohexenone ring double bond is there and the ketone is also there this other part comes from the this side double bond side so let us see how next is the we have completed the synthesis of visiofalvin and so let us see that what is the mode of action of visiofalvin how it is interacting as antifungal agent
so visiofalvin visiofalvin interacts with the tubulins so this this is the cell and when it undergoes a uh, cell division so this is the parent cell gets converted into the it becomes double it multiplies so that more and more dotted cells come now this if you zoom in this then it looks like this so these are called as the mitotic spindles now visiofalvin binds with the that particular stage in this picture it interacts with this or if we draw like this visiofalvin blocks the cell division in a simple way so visiofalvin binds to this then in inhibits mitotic spindle formation so this is mitotic spindle so as a result of this what happens now if this spindle formation gets uh, disturbed then cell will not undergo the multiplication means parent cell will not be converted into the dotted cell so this parent cell and the dotted cells all are the cells associated with the fungus not human cells so in this way visiofalvin will be having the fungi static effect means fungus growth will be under control next okay we will go to the next molecule that is dex orma platin it's an organo metallic compound dexo ma platin so the structure of this molecule is this which can be synthesized in only one step this molecule is diamino cyclohexane this is a chiral compound when this will undergo the reaction with the hexa chloroplatinate under oxidizing condition we get that dex orma platin whose structure is this so this is that diamino cyclohexane acts as the ligand which undergoes the complexation with the platinum now let us see what is its mode of action so how it controls the abnormal cell growth or in the related to cancer now let us see it undergoes it undergoes a that platinum undergoes a reaction with the dna so the nucleophilic substitution happens where the nucleophile is the chlorine attached with the platinum so there will be the this is monofunctional at adduct means the platinum will undergo the combination with the cancerous dna dna of the cancer cell in a single play single strand now these are the bifunctional adduct means platinum will be uh, combined in the two places now these two places can be coming from the single strand that is called as the intra strand and if these two sites are coming from the two different strands then that is called as the inter strand so bifunctional adduct can be of two types one is the intra strand another one is the inter strand so the platinum through platinum of dex orma platin uh, it undergoes the nucleophilic substitution and the dna growth becomes under control 
so this can be the monofunctional adduct it can be the bifunctional adduct in the bifunctional adduct it can be the intra strand complex formation otherwise it can be the inter strand complex formation so in this way it will be able to control the abnormal cell growth related to the cancerous cells now we will go to the chiral drug number 13 so that is r enantiomer of indacrinone so indacrinone is something related to the indane means the benzene ring is linked with the five membered ring and the that five membered ring has one Uh, benzylic position it has one c double bond o means the parent skeleton is called as the indanone so now let this is anti hypertensive means the patients which have the uh, who have the high bp to control their high bp to the bring down to the normal level depending on the situation obviously doctor gives anti hypertensive or indacrinone now let us synthesize see the synthesis and as in many times previously we have seen the starting compound will be having suitably oriented functional groups related to the functional groups present in the target molecule so now this is the uh, tri substituted um, uh, this benzene which is the parent compound is anisole now this anisole is second position and the third position the two chlorines which are present in the indacrinone were taken in the substrate now this compound is undergoing the reaction with the this is benzyl this is c double acid chloride now this is acylation happens means petal craft acylation when solvent is carbon disulfide now this is methoxy group is ortho para orienting and the chlorines are also ortho para orienting so the uh, acylation happens at this particular place which is ortho with respect to one chlorine and with respect to methoxy group this is the para position now at this benzylic for this group is the benzyl group bn stands for the benzyl group so that benzyl group ki that ch2 group is the having the active hydrogen now this active hydrogen will undergo the alkylation now this alkylation is this is CH two N CH two N M E two CH two N M E two. So this part gets incorporated at the benzylic position. Now next is this compound is subjected to the Hoffman exhaustive methylation. Now Hoffman's exhaustive methylation is an example to prepare alkene. so this nme2 becomes nme3 plus and then that becomes a good living group now in presence of this silver oxide under thermal condition elimination happens and we we get the double bond here now this double bond with this double bond and this benzene ring it undergoes a intramolecular fetal craft alkylation means this double bond behaves as alkylating agent so this compound after successful cyclization it becomes the indanone derivative substituted indanone the bond formation happens here in presence of concentrated sulfuric acid so it becomes converted into the indanone now this indanone is subjected to the uh, 
enantioselective methylation at this alpha position with respect to C double bond O. So the, let us see the combinations. It is methylation means methyl chloride number two is a chiral phase transfer catalyst. So chiral phase transfer catalyst will create the required environment for asymmetric synthesis. Number three is the aqua sodium hydride hydroxide means which will be acting as the base and the toline is solvent and the, the whole reaction asymmetric enantioselective methylation will occur at room temperature and what will be the uh, product is the this one now when this compound is treated with the boron tribromide demethylation happens this gets converted into the phenolic OH. Now when this phenolic OH undergoes the alkylation. This is alpha iodoacetic acid. Now this OH is not a good living group. So I is a good living group. So this oxygen will undergo the reaction over this CH2 so that I can go. So with this we can in this by following all these steps and taking the help of enantioselective methylation as one crucial step in this multi-step synthesis of indacrinone that R indac indacrinone which is dextrorotatory can be synthesized. So in this particular place it is what it is called the having R absolute configuration. So how let us see this is C double bond O is the first priority. This ring is the second priority. Phenyl is the third priority. Fourth priority group is the methyl group which is above the plane. So arrangement is 1, 2, 2, 2, 3 anti-clockwise means absolute configuration of the center will be R. And this compound it is what it is called the used as a chiral phase transfer catalyst. Now let us consider the next example noteglinide. So this is what it is called the noteglinide is an example of this is uh, for um, anti-diabetic. Now we know you know that India is a diabetic capital of the world. So maximum people are uh, here diabetic. So this molecule is a blood sugar lowering agent means under diabetic condition the blood sugar level goes up so that condition is called as the hyperglycemic glycemia hyperglycemia is nothing but the diabetes now by giving this medicine the sugar level in the blood comes down so this is anti-hyperglycemic agent now it is orally active means this is available in the form of the tablet so those diabetic patients can take this medicine orally no need to put the injection so this is uh, this is the medicine for the non-insulin dependent diabetes medicines means the diabetes which is not related to the deficiency of insulin that type of diabetes can be treated by giving this medicine obviously it depends on doctor's decision now let us see the structure of notaglimide that is absolute configuration of this center is R. So this R enantiomer is the utomer. So see the priority. This is the chiral center 
attach with the nitrogen so this is the first priority carboxylic acid is the second priority benzyl is the third priority and the hydrogen is fourth priority which is below the plane so the absolute configuration of first priority second priority third priority the fourth priority group is below the plane so the absolute configuration of this chiral center can be r now let us see how it is synthesis of this molecule how it proceeds now see this is the cumic acid so this is um, it's a para di substituted compound where the isopropyl group and the carboxylic acid they are present at the para position so when it is subjected to the catalytic hydrogenation number 2 is the treatment with the thionyl chloride so this hydrogen and the this uh, combination gives what it is a reducing agent and which reduces what is called the benzene ring so this benzene ring becomes what cyclohexane ring now the next is the thionyl chloride when thionyl chloride undergoes a reaction with the carboxylic acid so this carboxylic acid becomes a acid chloride and when it is treated with the methanol that esterification happens means we get this acid group gets converted into the methyl ester now at this particular place we go for the separation the cis molecule and the trans molecule forms what is called the 3 is to 1 ratio and after separation for the synthesis of the notoglymide the trans compound is taken for the next steps now when it is treated with the sodium hydroxide in presence of methanol then this is the condition for the ester hydrolysis so this ester gets converted into the carboxylic acid now this carboxylic acid undergoes a reaction with the n hydroxy succinamide in presence of coupling agent so what happens co this group water elimination happens it's a dehydration and this whole molecule gets i mean gets attachment over the nitrogen of succinamide now this molecule uh, we have labeled it as a now let us go to that another molecule that is uh, amino acid so this is phenyl alanine alanine is ch3 this is ch nh2 coh is considered as the alanine a one hydrogen of alanine methyl group is replaced by the phenyl so that amino acid is called as the phenyl alanine now this is the chiral center this is all naturally occurring alpha amino acids have the s absolute configuration except cysteine now this is phenyl alanine ki absolute configuration nitrogen is the first priority carboxylic acid is the second priority benzyl group is the third priority but the hydrogen is above the plane so therefore if it is anti clockwise means it is r now absolute configuration is r means this is unnatural d phenyl alanine so this unnatural variety of d phenyl alanine which has r absolute configuration is allowed to react with the thionyl chloride so acid gets converted into the acid halide now this in its turn undergoes a reaction with the a molecule which already we have synthesized in presence of triethylamine so 
what happens so this is this cyclohexane substituted cyclohexane this is c double amide linkage forms so this amide linkage is one part comes from the cyclohexyl system that another part is coming from the unnatural phenylalanine so with this our anti diabetic medicine synthesis is over now let us consider how its mode of action how it is uh, decreasing the sugar level in the blood now it acts by binding to the beta cells of pancreas now beta cells of pancreas is known for the insulin secretion so this binds at the beta cells of pancreas this notochaetae interacts with the beta cells of pancreas and as a result of this it stimulates the insulin release in presence of glucose means when glucose is present in the blood by looking at that insulin gets released from the beta cell of pancreas and this process insulin secretion by looking at the glucose concentration in the blood is activated by notochaetae so now see let us see that this is the pancreas symbolic representation of pancreas and pancreas ki this is the beta cell now when the glucose comes inside glycolysis happens and there will be the and this process is finally associated with the atp production now there is one atp uh, potassium channel is there on the cell membrane now what and it is it is atp sensitive uh, this is atp sensitive potassium channel so when notochaetae interacts with this when notochaetae interacts with this potassium channel then what happens so this is voltage get this calcium channel and the potassium channel they are interlinked and then this insulin interacts so it will be producing the more insulin so let us repeat this mode of action so this mode of action of this molecule notochaetae is the glucose lowering agent in the blood so let us see its mode of action how it is doing all these things it is doing indirectly by secreting more insulin so how it is working now when the glucose comes inside glycolysis happens and it leads to the formation of atp now this atp interacts with the atp sensitive potassium channel now in on this potassium channel what notochaetae interacts so as a result of this interaction what happens it activates the voltage gated calcium 2 plus channel and the insulin goes out
Now this ATP inhibits the potassium channel. So potassium potassium ion cannot go outside. So notaglinide also does the same thing. So the potassium channel is closed. So it causes the depolarization and the calcium channel opens. Calcium starts coming inside and this calcium improves the insulin secretion which is required for the uh, controlling of sugar level in blood. So whatever we have discussed in the previous page that is the another way of representation. So let us see that glucose is coming inside the pancreas. Now when the glucose is coming inside then glucose 6-phosphate and uh, that uh, it gets convert finally it gets converted into the ATP. Now when ATP goes to the ATP dependent potassium channel then it blocks. Now notaglinide when the patient takes the notaglinide, notaglinide also interacts with the same potassium channel so that potassium cannot go out. So as a result of this depolarization happens, voltage gated calcium channel opens and the calcium starts going inside. Now once calcium comes inside it interacts with the insulin secretory ganglion so that more, more and more insulin uh, gets secreted to control the sugar level of the um, diabetic patient. So by blocking potassium channel, it opens calcium to plus calcium channel. Calcium comes in and interacts with the insulin secretory granules. And this more uh, insulin uh, helps to control the blood sugar level for non-insulin dependent diabetes. Hope I am clear. Now we will go to the 15th chiral drug oxybutynin hydrochloride. So the structure of this molecule is this and this is the S enantiomer is the utiomer and it is act, uh, active as diuretic. So diuretic means something which is re related to the um, uh, throwing of excess water molecule from our body by taking the help of medicines. Now let us see that oxybutynin hydrochloride how it can be synthesized. The structure of this molecule is this. Now this part is taken as a substrate of the synthesis of oxybutynin hydrochloride. Now when it undergoes this linkage now what will be the Next thing, the next thing is the formation of the ester. So the whole molecule, the ripped over part comes as the alcohol. Means if we start NET2 connected with the CH2, connected with the triple bond, then again CH2OH. So NET2, CH2, C triple bond C, CH2OH is allowed to react with the carboxylic acid. And in single step of esterification, this by using these two components, oxybutynin can be synthesized. Now this is labeled as X. How can we synthesize X? Now this is actually cutting has happened. Actually here phenyl group is there. So phenyl group is... Uh,
glisphenyl group. Glisphenyl group is present which is attached with the chiral center which has the um, OH which has the carboxylic acid. Now when this is allowed to react with the triplic acid in presence of this aldehyde. Now what happens? Now this tertiary butyl group is very characteristic and can be used as the pilot. Now this tertiary butyl group is attached with the carbon which has the which has the aldehyde carbon. So this carbon is aldehyde carbon. So this is pH. Now next is the chiral center OH. So the, in this way it undergoes a reaction. Now this compound is undergoing the reaction with the cyclohexanone. So cyclohexanone undergoes a reaction with this molecule by 1 to addition means C double bond O. So here that acidic hydrogen is this one. So this hydrogen is captured by the base and this carbanion undergoes a reaction with the cyclohexanone so we get this compound. This compound is allowed to react with the thionyl chloride followed by the potassium hydroxide. So as a result of this, this part opens up. This dehydration also happens. So we get this uh, substituents present in the chiral center OH, PH and carboxylic acid. Now when finally it is subjected to because we need the cyclohexane ring, not what is called the cyclohexane ring. So it is subjected to the catalytic hydrogenation for the reduction of cyclohexane to cyclohexane derivative. Now with this we have synthesized the oxybutynin hydrochloride. Now next see how it is interacting. So it is an antagonist of muscarinic acetylcholinergic receptor. So cholinergic receptors are of two types in our body. Muscarinic cholinergic receptors and the nicotinic cholinergic receptor. So specifically this oxy oxybutynin interacts with um, muscarinic cholinergic receptor. And in this way, it interacts, it uh, it gets converted into, um, no, it acts as um, this um, diuretic. So it is used to improve the problems like the free frequent urination, inability to control urination. So this is over that is called as the overactive bladder syndrome. So to, for the treatment of the diuretic patients, this is used as a uh, preventive measure. So muscarinic. Uh, um, Cholinergic receptors are also what is called the three types. So it blocks all the subtypes M1 type, M2 type and the M3 subtypes of muscarinic cholinergic receptors. So in this way it helps to solve, to control urination. Now this is the mode of action of This is the mode of action of oxybutynin. Now this is the presynaptic nerve. This is the postsynaptic nerve. This is the synaptic cleft. Now this is what it is called the receptors. 
now this is our acetylcholine the dark colored circles are the acetylcholine and acetylcholine interacts with the cholinergic receptors this is muscarinic cholinergic receptors So this is during the overactive bladder condition. This interacts, what it is called the this uh, receptors interact with oxybutynin. So this is under disease condition. So this is the normal. Uh, this is natural process where the acetylcholine is interacting with the cholinergic receptors in the post synaptic. nerve and this is activated by the g protein this is a g protein coupled receptor now this is it leads to what it is called the involuntary constructions of smooth muscle of urinary bladder now during disease condition to control it oxybutynin medicine is given by doctors which acts as antagonist means it blocks the receptors as a result of this acetylcholine cannot come and interact with muscarinic receptors so this uh, square box represents the oxybutynin and the black color circle represents the acetylcholine so it in, the, in this way it controls what it is called the it improves the overactive bladder condition of the patients now come to the 16th molecule that is captopril pril that is anti hypertensive so this is the structure there are two chiral centers are there the, both the absolute configuration of the both chiral centers are s now how to let us discuss how to synthesize this molecule it start the synthesis starts from s proline and it undergoes a reaction with that all that whole side chain which is present in the captopril in one step it will come here so sulfur is protected with the acetyl group now this is ch2 group it is attached with the chiral center hopefully that absolute configuration of this molecule is the s because this is the first priority second priority third priority the fourth priority group is at the back so the absolute configuration is s now when it undergo these two compound this is also s it is naturally occurring proline first priority second priority and third nh is the first priority carboxylic acid is the second priority and this ch2 group is the third priority so this is anti clockwise means this also has the s absolute configuration so these two molecule when they undergo the combination hcl goes and the amide linkage forms now the next step only this is this molecule is one step away from captopril the only difference is we have to remove this acetyl group we have to deprotect this acetyl group so that was done by that can be done by the treatment with ammonia so scoch3 gets converted into the sh so this is the structure of captopril we know that it is a mode of action is this is anti hypertensive means under um, high bp condition depending on the um, various factors of that patient doctor gives captopril to bring the high bp normal now the mode of action is the its enzyme inhibitor and the name of the enzyme is what this is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor so this is let us see how it uh, it is the mode of action this is the angiotensinogen which is present in the liver gets converted into the angiotensin 1 by taking the help of renin renin gets secreted from kidney cap 
Now angiotensin 1 is a decapeptide means that 10 amino acids are there in this angiotensin 1. This angiotensin 1 gets converted into angiotensin 2 which is octapeptide and this conversion happens by taking the I mean help of angiotensin converting enzyme ACE. Now when it happens normally it leads to the vasoconstriction blood vessels gets narrow and the BP increases for the healthy persons but under high BP condition this should be blocked means BP should not be increased further so that angiotensin 1 can be stopped for the conversion of from the conversion of angiotensin 2 so this inhibitor is the members of the pril series so they are all blocks this step which step angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 the which is catalyzed by the angiotensin converting enzyme so the pril series here we are discussing about captopril to so captopril blocks uh, active site of angiotensin converting enzyme well, as a result of this what happens huh? angiotensin 1 cannot be converted into the angiotensin 2 now let us see how it interacts captopril interacts with the angiotensin converting enzyme now it is a metalloenzyme where the active site contains zinc now zinc undergoes the interaction with the sulfur of captopril. CH3 at the chiral center has the hydrophobic inter, uh, interaction and it falls in the S2 pocket of this enzyme. This is S3 pocket and this C double bond O of the amide linkage undergoes the hydrogen bonding and the COO minus means the carboxylate undergoes the ionic interaction. So there are four interactions are there here between the captopril and the active site of angiotensin converting enzyme number one is the zinc binding interaction number two is the hydrogen bonding number three is the hydrophobic interaction and the number four is the ionic interaction so in this way it blocks the angiotensin converting enzyme and the bp does not increase for hypertensive patient whose bp is already up now go to the last molecule that is the second generation uh, antihypertensive drug enaropril. Now as captopril has some because of the sulfur some um, side effects are there. So the second generation uh, antihypertensive drug is the enaropril. Now enaropril is a pro drug inside our body it gets converted into the enaroprilate which is the actual drug now this part is common that is uh, coming from the proline this amide linkage is also common now here also this this part is different in place of sulfur it has come now here three chiral centers are there all the chiral centers have the absolute configuration SSS now if we see the synthesis let us discuss little the disconnection so this bond, this amide bond is uh, formed by the, it's an amide bond so uh, proline can be used and it can be uh, allowed to interact with the um, suitable um, carboxylic acid derivative to develop this amide linkage. But when it comes to this amine, this can be prepared by the reductive alkylation. So keeping it in the mind that synthesis starts with the this part. This part is a proline, this part is the alanine and this part is a, nothing to do with the carboxylate, I mean amino acid. So this the starting compound is the L-alanine because it has a S absolute configuration, nitrogen first priority, carboxylic acid second priority. Methyl is the third priority and the hydrogen is the fourth priority. So this is the 
L alanine having the S absolute configuration when it undergoes the reaction with the carbonyl chloride. Then what happens? Now these two chlorines goes, two molecules of HCl goes. One H goes from the NH2, another H goes from the discarboxylic acid. So we get what is called the this cyclic molecule. Now when this molecule undergoes the reaction with the S proline, then we get this this part. This ring again opens up. This is the anhydride type linkage. So this is this opens up this this that reaction happens with the nitrogen. And we get this, this next to the chiral center reaction happens means the ion hydrogen attacks here. Double bond opens up in the reverse polarization, it comes back and this goes out. <coughs> now the next is this amide linkage formation is over. Now we will concentrate on the reductive alkylation. So we have to allow this molecule to for the condensation uh, with the suitable uh, uh, ketone so that imine bond formation will happen and the imine will be reduced by the sodium cyanoborohydride. So, uh, this molecule is uh, has a very similarity with the enaraprid this part. So, this is pH CH2 CH2 pH CH2CH2 then you will be having this carbon which is attached with the ester. This is C double bond O COET. So when this compound undergoes a reaction with this, this NH2 and the C double bond O reacts and water elimination happens we get the imine bond. Now when this imine bond will be um, subjected to the um, reduction by using the sodium cyanoborohydride. So we get what it is called the SSS in our April. This is absolute configuration. This is absolute configuration. This absolute configuration. Everything is S. Now in our body means this is a pro drug. When the medicine goes inside it becomes the actual effective drug which is the ester hydrolysis happens and the body's pH this remains COO minus. This also remains as COO minus. So the dianion. So, di, di anion is the active drug. So, the mode of action is almost similar to the captopril with a little difference that S1 pocket, S2 pocket and S3 pocket all are occupied. So, this is by the phenyl group, this is by the methyl group, this is by the some part of the proline moiety. In addition with this, this that carbo two carboxylic acids, the carboxylates are there. One carboxylate is uh, doing the same role as the SH of captopril means it undergoes the coordination interaction with the Zn2 plus. And this C double bond as usual the hydrogen bonding and this carboxylate undergoes the ionic interaction. So hydrophobic, in, hydrophobic interactions in S1 pocket, S2 pocket, S3 pocket, these ionic interactions between the carboxylate and the zinc carboxylate and any positive side and the hydrogen bonding. So in this way this cap this inner up prelate lowers the BP in a more effective manner than captopril. So with this hopefully we have finished the chiral drug. Thank you one and all.